The key to success in working specific gravity problems is understanding the relationship between specific gravity and density. Make sure you understand density. Specific gravity is an intensive property, just like density is an intensive property. It is a comparison of the density of a substance to the density of a standard. And very often we write it like this. It is the density of x relative to the density of the standard. Now, there's something you need to realize here. The units of the density of x and the units of density of the standard are the same. So the units will cancel. Therefore, specific gravity is dimensionless. It has no units. The standard for solids and liquids is water, usually at 4 degrees Celsius. Do you know what that is? Well, if not, maybe you should look back at the section on density. But at about 4 degrees Celsius, the density of water is 1 gram per milliliter. The standard for gases, and we usually talk about the gases at STP, is 1.292 grams per liter. Again, we talked about that in density. But you need to know both of these standards because you'll be using them when you deal with specific gravity. Let's try this problem. If the specific gravity of mercury is 13.6, what volume would 100 grams of mercury occupy? Now I trust you know that mercury is a liquid. And do you understand that 13.6 means that the density of mercury is 13.6 times that of water? We start with 100 grams of mercury. And we know that one milliliter of mercury weighs 13.6 grams. How do we know that? We know that because the density of water is 1 gram per milliliter. The specific gravity of mercury is 13.6. So the density of mercury is 13.6 grams per milliliter. Our units cancel. And we are left with 7.35 milliliters. Now this is a very simple problem, but I, it does point out a couple of important things. One is that specific gravity has no units. The other is that you can very easily determine what the density of a solid or a liquid is by looking at the specific gravity. If the specific gravity of carbon dioxide is 1.52, what volume would 80 grams of the gas occupy? The specific gravity is 1.52. Hmm. What is our reference? What is our standard for gases? Well, the standard for gases is air at STP, and since we weren't given any other conditions, we will therefore assume that this is at STP. And the specific gravity, uh, or the density, I beg your pardon, of air is 1.292 grams per liter. So let's try the problem. A specific gravity of the gas, carbon dioxide, of 1.52 means that carbon dioxide is 1.52 times as dense as air. Or if you will, a volume of carbon dioxide is 1.52 times as heavy as an equal volume of air. All right, either way you want to think about it. So the density of carbon dioxide then is 1.292 grams per liter, the density of air, times 1.52 to give us 1.96 grams per liter as the density of carbon dioxide. Now, it's easy to work the problem. Now that we have figured this out, 80 grams of carbon dioxide times a liter over 1.96 grams tells us that we have, after canceling the units, a volume of 40.8 liters. Do you get the idea? Remember, specific gravity is a ratio of densities, and it's a ratio using a standard. The standard for liquids and solids is water. The standard for gases is air. Brought to you courtesy of the chemistry professor, offering complete chemistry courses on DVD. 
visit us at our site on the web, www.chemistryprofessor.com.